Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Let's talk styles. Not an upcoming fight, but possible future fights. And let's talk about why I think dominant champions of the moment, Adrian Broner and Vitaly Klitschko, aren't unbeatable. Remember, my theory, my belief, especially after watching boxing for decades and seeing prime Ray Leonard lose, seeing prime Mike Tyson lose, seeing prime Felix Trinidad lose, seeing prime Bernard Hopkins lose, right? My theory, my belief is simply that styles make fights. No fighter is unbeatable. I believe Adrian Broner and Vitaly Klitschko both have a character trait that against some styles would be viewed as a flaw. And let me name opponents who I think would make for great fights against Broner, who is unbeaten as I make this video, and Vitaly Klitschko, who is on the verge of retirement, but wants to hang around for one or two big fights, right? And I do consider Vitaly to be one of the all-time greats in the heavyweight division. You remember in the 1970s, if you grew up back then, or 80s, you remember Sugar Ray Leonard, a great fighter, who, in addition to having phenomenal upper body movement, Ray Leonard could literally stand in front of you. And as you would throw punches, he would swivel at the waist and move his body so that you couldn't even hit his body. Take a look at the early part of his fight against Thomas Hearns. And I'm talking about the first fight between those two, right? But in addition to having absolutely ridiculous upper body movement, really some of the best upper body movement I've seen, what Ray Leonard would do, and Leonard shared a trainer with Muhammad Ali, right? They're Hall of Famers all over the place. If you look at the lineage, his trainer was Angelo Dundee. And what Ray Leonard would do is what Ali used to do. He would hide his feet. In other words, you couldn't look down and figure out when Ray Leonard was in a position to throw a big punch because Ray, like Ali, would dance, right? We called it dancing. He would dance around the ring. And when you got close to Ray Leonard, Ray Leonard would do things like shuffle his feet. Back then we called it an Ali shuffle. He would shuffle his feet to look good to the crowd, but also to throw off his opponent. So his opponent couldn't figure out when Ray's feet were set so Ray could throw the punch. And if you tried to bum rush Ray Leonard, right, Ray Leonard, while backing up, could literally plant his front foot on a dime. This is while dancing. He could plant his front foot on a dime, get leverage, and throw hard punches. Right? The kind of punches that could knock you down. As Sonny Liston found out when he got hit by what we called a phantom punch in his rematch against Muhammad Ali as Ali was backing up. Right, Liston literally runs into a right hand. Right? Well, my point to you is simply this. You know, boxing runs in cycles. And today, we actually have the opposite of that with Adrian Broner and Vitaly Klitschko. You know, I've watched Broner's KO of Eloy Perez a few times. It's tremendous. But understand that both Broner and Vitaly Klitschko keep their legs so wide apart right, that they leave nothing to the imagination for their opponents.
Now I know Eloy Perez before the fight actually commented on Broner's feet. They actually comment on it during the fight. Roy Jones points out that when you keep your base wide apart, that helps give you leverage and power. Right? You're able to simply throw harder punches. Right? Well, my point to you, and I know I'm a minority voice right now because even I could see the Broner KO was spectacular and it's hard to critique an unbeaten fighter, right? Especially when he's unbeaten. But my point to you is simply that Eloy Perez fought the wrong fight. When you're fighting a guy with that wide a stance, right? You have to turn him. You can't allow him to set his feet. Harold Letterman even comments during the fight that Perez is standing right in front of Adrian Broner, right? At a distance that's allowing Broner to set his feet, to get the angles he wants to set everything up, right? Well, all I'm saying is, when a guy has his feet that wide apart, I believe that if you force him to move his feet, and this is part of the sport that's below the waist, if you force him to move his feet, since he needs a wide base to generate his power, if you force him to move his feet, you'll dissipate his power. Not only that, if you get him out of his comfort zone on the angle, and watch Broner. Broner has very broad shoulders. He has an excellent left hook up front. He stands in a Floyd Mayweather defensive stance, but what Broner who is a technician, a counterpuncher, is doing the entire Perez fight, is coming in and setting up an angle where he has you literally in line for his left hook or his straight right hand. And it's a straight right hand that ends the fight. Now, all I'm saying is Broner against Prime Ray Leonard. Let's just... Let's just pretend that Broner at 130, let's hope this phone goes off. Let's just pretend that Broner at 130 is the same weight as Prime Leonard at 147. What I believe a guy like Ray Leonard would do is to read Broner's feet and then to hop in at an angle Broner is uncomfortable with knowing that for Broner to reset his feet to the wide stance and angle that he's accustomed to will take one or two seconds. And by then, Ray Leonard would come in and bust up Broner with a good combination. The fight before the Perez fight, the opponent actually gets Broner on the ropes. Now, Broner is great defensively. In my opinion, he's one of the absolute best in the game defensively. So as the guy gets Broner on the ropes, Broner doesn't panic. He has a Floyd Mayweather quality where even on the ropes, he's calm, right? He's not tense like Devin Alexander. No, he's the opposite end of the spectrum. This is the James Tony end of the spectrum. Broner is calm. He might as well be doing his nails in the ring. Right? The guy is right here throwing, and Broner, who's a technician, knows the angles. He's able to cover up. The guy can't hurt him on the ropes. But Broner couldn't hurt the guy when the guy had him on the ropes. Right? Because Broner, up on the ropes, didn't have his wide base. And he needs a wide, he needs to have his feet wide apart to play his game. And his game, forget the boxing skills, his game is as a power puncher.
Look at the KO percentage. So really, to beat Broner, what you need is a guy who, unlike Perez, is going back and leaving while he's backing up. Broner's keeping the same angle, right? Broner has his left shoulder toward him, and the guy moves this way. Broner moves the left shoulder that way. Guy moves this way. Broner just resets. It's like fighting the Terminator, right? You need a Ray Leonard guy who can literally jump to the side, keep Broner moving his feet, because Broner's going to try to maintain the angle, and then you need the guy to be able to, using lateral movement, jump inside Broner's comfort zone while Broner has his feet wide apart, unable to do anything because his feet are set for you to be here. You need a lateral mover. You need someone like Sergio Martinez. Now, the person who can move laterally, who can jump in, and throw very hard punches. And keep in mind, you need hand speed because Broner is great defensively, but the one knock on a guy like Broner, the same with Mayweather, is they're so good defensively that these guys often won't even raise a hand. They're just doing shoulder rolls to protect themselves, right? And so just like Floyd got stung by Shane Mosley, Right. You know, Floyd didn't have his hand up. Floyd's relying on rolls. I believe Broner could get stung by a Ray Leonard type, someone who could literally jump in and throw quick bombs. And I believe a great opponent for Adrian Broner, who would keep him turning, who has faster feet than Broner and who wouldn't allow Broner to line him up like Eloy Perez lined up for Broner's straight right hand. I believe that guy is going to be the future lightweight champion. That's Yorkis Gamboa. He's fighting Brandon Rios in a fight I think he wins. We'll figure out how full of it I am if he wins that fight, right? Because I believe if Gamboa beats Rios, at 135 pounds, then I think we have a super fight in the making between 130 pound champion Adrian Broner and 135 pound champion Yorkis Gamboa. All I'm saying is, you're a dead duck if you sit in front of Adrian Broner. If you allow Adrian Broner to line you up, like a field goal kicker, lines up for a field goal, you're finished. But understand Gamboa's game is that of an ambush fighter, and he's blessed with great leverage, quick hands. He can lead with power shots, right? And you're better off leading with power shots against the Broner because if you shoot a jab to set stuff up, then Broner is going to make the adjustment. Right, So you need to surprise him because he's too good defensively. Now let's talk about the heavyweight division. Let's talk about Vitaly Klitschko. Vitaly Klitschko does a lot of things well. But even though he moves around the ring, I believe when he moves, he loses power. Think about the fights where Vitaly Klitschko has knocked guys out or has dominated. More times than not, Klitschko pins a guy like Shannon Briggs up on the ropes. And just like Broner, same type thing. It's all angles. He has you lined up for a left hand, right? If you throw jabs against him, that's the worst thing you can do against Vitaly because Vitaly is so tall, he comes over your jab, right? And of course, Vitaly lately in part because of arm problems, it looks like to me, has dispensed a bit with his jab. He comes in, he's in a Philly shell, just like Broner. Like Broner, he's blocking shots with his arms and shoulders, and he's always calibrating, lining you up for his straight right hand. An opponent who would make it interesting, well, first let me say this, style-wise, 
And again, I know my view is unpopular. Certainly my uh, subscribers have let me know that. But I believe style-wise, a guy like Adlanir Solis, who has a high guard, who has a high boxing IQ, who can literally invade Vitaly's space while Vitaly is in his wide stance, and who has enough defense to block Vitaly's right hand on the way in to get inside and to stay inside, right? I believe Adlanir Solis would give Vitaly Klitschko a great fight. Let's go one step further. And of course, unlike Derek Chisora, Solis throws straight punches and they're very hard, right? Very hard. Well, if not Solis, then what I'd like to see is another guy who plays the angles. He just went the distance with Vladimir Klitschko, right? And that's David Hay. I agree, David Hay can't fight inside. But what David Hay can do is what Eloy Perez did not do against Adrian Broner. He, he moves very well, right? Hay would be outside moving around the ring, right? His version, a 2012 version of dancing. He'd be dancing around the ring. And Hay is quick jumping in and against the guy with a wide base who he keeps turning I believe Hay could on a quick strike and he's much faster handed than Derek Chisora and he's very accurate you don't see Hay throwing a lot of wild punches at least not straight right hands Hay could come in land a you know bomb from the outside if he lands on Vitaly Klitschko then at that point He'd be able to jump inside. He'd catch Vitaly in a wide foot base, unprepared for the angle of the attack. Right? I hope, and I'm just making this video as a fan, I hope Adrian Broner fights Yorkies Gamboa if Gamboa beats Rios. Right? I think that would be the sport at its best. Don't go by age. Go by skill level. Broner right now, quite frankly, is one of the most skilled men in the sport. Right? He's not starting out. He's more advanced, in my opinion, than most champions. So you need a guy with speed and leverage who can get him to reset his feet. If the guy can't, force Broner to reset his feet and is too slow to do that, he's going to lose to Broner, right? Same thing with Vitaly Klitschko. You need a guy who, in my opinion, can beat him from the inside out, right? The only guy in the heavyweight division that I think can hang with Vitaly Klitschko from the inside out is Adlinir Solis. If you're going to beat him from the outside in, strikes from the outside, then you need to have the foot speed to force him to reset. Because when Vitaly and Broner move their feet, they lose their power. And I believe of all the guys who have that, who can lead with power shots, David Hay is the best opponent of the outside in crowd on Vitaly Klitschko. All of these other heavyweights, Marius Walk, um, Sasha, uh, Dennis Boistoff, I just don't think they move well enough. Alexander Demetrenko, I don't think they move well enough to give Vitaly Klitschko a real challenge, right? And so I know Hayes retired. I know Vitaly Klitschko and his... Managers say they're not fighting Hay because his demands are too rich for them. Let's hope they rethink it because I think it would be boxing at its best between a current heavyweight champion, certain Hall of Famer, and a former heavyweight champion. I think style-wise, 
that's a pretty good fight too. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.